Good evening, everyone. My name is Olga Prichotka. This is Social Talks. We start our live talk with famous person, with outstanding musician, great percussionist, uh, composer, and the band leader of Tromboranga Salsa Orchestra from Barcelona, Joaquin Arteaga. Good evening. Hello, Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening, good night. I don't know where I in the world. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's great to see you with us tonight, smiling. Uh, in a, and uh, we have a lot of things to discuss during our social talks. Yeah. So, what is the weather in Barcelona right now, right now? Well, here is very hot at the moment. Actually, it looks, uh, we have a very nice view now and a very amazing sunset today because there is some clouds on the side, plus the moon. We have, uh, it's not full moon now, it's the day after full moon, but it's beautiful. So if there is someone around Barcelona, just look around. Well, maybe all around the world, the, the full moon is going to be nice. So take advantage and check it out because the moon is inspiring for <laughs> So we have also very hot weather today in Kyiv. This summer is also very hot in here. So we prepared also some hot questions for you. So let's start. So you are a percussionist from your early ages. So you felt this great passion for music from your childhood. Who were those people who encouraged your love to the music? I mean, your family, the, uh, to be realistic, my family always supported me, you know, of, of, of being whatever I wanted to. But they always wanted to, me to be an architect or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, you know. They, they were not really too much into me to be a musician. I was very clear that I wanted to be a musician since I was seven, I think, since, since I remember, you know. Uh, I remember saying to my grandfather when I was a kid, I want to be a musician, I want to play drums, I want to play guitar, I want to play uh, conga. And they were like, no, nah, you play it like fun, but you have to go to university, study, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the, the standard thing, especially in Venezuela, people are very conservative about this, you know. Being a musician is not like a professional, it's just like a hobby and, you know, you can make some money out of it, but not as a professional, you have to go to... Not so only in Venezuela, actually. Venezuela, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. So so it, it was not easy and when I was uh, around 15 years old and when I until 22 years old because I have not only I mean my family it's not that it was against but it was it wasn't it wasn't easy with them you know because I don't have family my family are not musicians are not dancers are actually not into art. Uh, my mother is a doctor, my father is an engineer, so obviously they, they were not like, you have to study music, uh, it's not, it wasn't like that. Even though, the, the, the funny thing is that I went to school since very young to a music school, so all my, my life I've been to music schools. Wait. You have a son, and uh, I know that your son is already playing some instruments, so he probably wants to be a musician. Yeah, he probably, I, I don't know, I mean, he's, he's three years old, so it's really hard to tell that if he's going to be a musician. Uh, he, he likes... But he when likes, we see this oh, video, it is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, oh, that's a funny video, because that was on quarantine. We couldn't get out of house for three months. For a three-year-old, you can imagine how hard was that. And um, he actually, it's funny how the mind of a little kid works because he, he, he started just strumming the guitar and saying, uh, there is a virus, there is a virus, I can get out of my house. Oh, and it's, I'm so worried about my, uh, my grandparents, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they all it was, we, we were all like, whoa, man, you know, it's, it's so funny how, how kids react to, to certain things that go in life and they can reflect it in music, even though he doesn't know how to play guitar or, or cuatro or drums, you know. 
So it was very inter interesting thing to see on, on, on your own song. Uh, uh, studying Afro-Venezuelan percussion first and then Afro-Cuban yeah. percussion, but you started in Venezuela, but then according to your official biography, you moved to New York City. Can you tell about this period, why you moved to New York and you continue, continue and studying there? Let yeah. Let yeah. percussion. Uh, the thing is that when when you lived in Venezuela in, in the 80s, well, still now, but a lot of people wanted to go to study music outside and share with musicians outside Venezuela, even though we have amazing Venezuelan musicians there to study with, and a lot of great teachers, and a lot of music and, and, and uh, cultures inside Venezuela. Because in Venezuela, you if you go to any beach, there is musicians playing on the beach, and you can learn any drum, any sing, way of singing Venezuelan drums. Also, you have a lot of Joropo music from uh, the mountains and the plains in, in Venezuela. Also, you have the Cuatro from Venezuela. Plus, you have all the music from Brazil. That also, there is a lot of Brazilian music going on in Venezuela. And also, we have a lot of Cubans, <laughs> you know? And we are in the Caribbean. So we have a lot of Caribbean influence also. So it's it's a very nice place to live in Caracas, about music speaking, because there is a lot of talent, a lot of competition also. But everyone want, wanted to leave to New York or to Miami because, you know, their big, great, great musicians are there and the great schools. Yeah, so yeah. I, I kind of bite a little bit on that. And I, I wanted to go to New York. I wanted to go to study in Berkeley, uh, etc. you know. So... A lot of things happened in my life during, you know, period 15 year old, 20 year old. I went to to study in New York as an exchange student, and that that was when I was 16, and that changed my life because I started actually doing what I wanted to do. It was just only music. So I bought my, I was able to finally buy my own set of drum set because in Venezuela I didn't have my own. I have to lend it because I didn't have money to buy a new uh, yes. drum. You know, in Venezuela, in those, those it was very hard to have a drum set, you know. Uh, now, it still is. <laughs> but um, I, I had my own drum set. And then when I went to New York, I said, I really want to go to Berkeley in Boston. I had to come back to Venezuela. And then I got a scholarship. But with the scholarship, I was not possible to go to Boston. So uh, it, it, it was a bit hard for me. You know, taking the decision, why should I do? Because everyone, you know, the society is like, you have to study, you have to go here. Everyone go to Berkeley to study because it's the best school. And uh, I ended up being in New York, sharing with a lot of musicians there, which was a very good experience. And uh, I went to the Boys Harbor uh, Conservatory and I studied with some musicians that were part of the big band of Tito Puente, like Jose Madera. Uh, John Rodriguez also was there, and I got to study with them, go to some classes with them. Not a lot, because they were also, for me, they were, it was very expensive. So that's how I got to New York, and I met people there. But then I ended up going back to Venezuela, you know. Uh, because but then the you moved to Bar Barcelona. And then I moved to Barcelona. Why Barcelona? It, it was total casualty it was not planned actually uh, but I think the universe sometimes put you things on the way sure. um, with the scholarship I earned uh, it was not enough for me to go to Boston so I used the scholarship to go to to come to Barcelona because there was another uh, university here that worked the same as Berkeley so I came here and at the end you know uh, I came here and I loved it I loved Barcelona you know, I, I was going to come for one year or two years, and I I, I stayed. I, I just loved it. And uh, after two years being in school, I started already teaching in school, and then I finished all my graduation stuff and and but everything. You were teaching there. You were teaching in Barcelona. You yeah, 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 yeah. Do you one... still teach? I, I still teach. Yeah, 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 and a lot. I surely have to <laughs> to cut that because I teach a lot now, but. Um, the thing back then, because I've been here 22 years already, eh? it's a lot of time in Barcelona already, almost half of my life. You know, I'm 30 now, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> I, I'm 47, and I've been I thought here... that 25, actually. <laughs> no, I'm 47, <laughs> and I've been here for 22 years, so, you know, almost half of my life. And I, I since I arrived to Barcelona, like, things started to open, you know. People were starting calling me to do tours and playing not only salsa, but I played rock, reggae, uh, classical music, so everything jumped started from there and uh, I've been very busy since since I arrived here so I cannot complain really and and now I'm lucky enough like you know we've been traveling with Tromboranga for almost nine years all around the globe you know all around the world from Australia to Japan to Colombia USA Russia uh, you know you name it. but Ukraine Ukraine is not awesome. Ukraine we yeah. need to go to Ukraine yeah we will we will think. <laughs> yeah, we will think over about that. So, um, you are official endorser, I don't know how to say, representative of the prestigious Latin percussion oh. yeah. uh, brand. Latin percussion, yeah. I wanted to ask you, how many rooms are occupied right now by the instruments oh. in your house? <laughs> uh... How many rooms? How many? Well, how many? The... Uh, my my wife will love you for that question. Yeah, <laughs> I, I we have... didn't we didn't discuss it. <laughs> it was like a spontaneous question. It's 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 crazy because I have a lot of drums. I I, I actually love to collect drums, especially now vintage. Um, so I I have a separate studio from the house where I teach person to person. Uh, and now I actually have to move to another one, bigger, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I have, I don't know how many congas, timbales, etc. Plus, in the house, I still have a lot of things. And I am kind of messy sometimes, you know, even though I look like I'm not, I am very messy. And sometimes I leave a lot of congas, you know, in one corner with shakers, you know, in the other corner. And, you know, plus when you get the sponsor from LP, you know, you got a lot of instruments to do recordings and stuff. So... Yeah, I, I love instruments and I love to, especially when we record for Tromboranga, I like to have, you know, two or three timbales, uh, different congas, so we can manage to see which one sounds better for the, the type of music we're going to record. So it's, it is very nice to, I cannot complain. But um, do you think of learning to play some other instruments besides percussion, like trombone, maybe, I don't know, uh, bass? It's... Very important, very important for a musician. Try to learn other instruments totally different from what you do. Uh, I learned to play a little bit of bass, so I, I know how to play a little bit of bass, you know. Uh, obviously, I, I play a little bit of keyboards because I know how harmony works and stuff. You have to know a little bit. Um, the thing is that I'm very passionate about drums. So every time I, I get a drum on my hand and I see a new rhythm or someone playing something that I, oh man, this sounds so tasteful. I don't like fast stuff. Like people, a lot of drummers are into fast things, you know, blah, 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 you know, I'm more like into grooves. So okay. sometimes when I, when I see or hear, especially now that there is a lot of vintage video from the 60s, 70s, and you hear like a, Wow, which band is this with a very steady and tasteful groove that, you know, like you want to wake up and dance? I really want to invest, investigate what are they doing there and why, why does it sound that tasteful, you know? Because a lot of drummers just go to, oh, they're doing fast paradiddles, you know, at 300 the pulse. You know, I, I don't care about that, really. I, I care more about the, what, how it functions to make it. If it, if it was a, um, I don't know how you say that in English, uh, rece una receta for cooking. You, you know, mean, uh, I you mean like, oven, oven. Yeah, yeah like if, if I were a cook, okay, okay, I will be the type of cook that really enjoys of how to make this uh, food very tasteful, you know, with no, with not so blurry things, but like very tasteful, just that play, uh, food. So that's that's what I like. I love to see people dance. I mean, you know it. You know, I, I love when when we play and people are dancing. So that that's what I look for on music. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have some questions about uh, your music a little bit further, but also uh, now I want to move to the a question about the band, the Tromburanga band that you created in 2011, right? And uh, uh, just interesting, how and why you you know this decision came to you? Of course, you're a professional musician. You've been traveling a lot with other. Uh, famous musicians as a percussionist, uh, as a uh, accompanying other musicians, but why you decided to create your own, your own band? Who inspired you? Well, I always wanted to have a band like Tromboranga. Tromboranga for me is like a song or a dream. You know, it, uh, I always wanted to have a band like that since I was a kid, but I never thought I was capable of doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm being in, I'm being very crystal clear here. I think I haven't said this in an interview before, but I, I never thought I was going to have a band like Tromboranga, which is true. I wanted to. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I used to hear I don't know from everything from Dimension Latina, Oscar de Leon, but I also hear Peter Gabriel, Sting, uh, and you know, and, and I thought you know I would love to travel and play and be on tour with Peter Gabriel or Sting or whatever. And, you know, now I'm traveling all around the world with my own band, which is like, wow, I can't believe that I did this, you know? Uh, I think Tromboranga, it's, it's, it, I, I love the trombone sound, you know? And the first thing I remember about music was hearing La Dimension Latina from Venezuela uh, on the house of my grandmother. They used to have a lot of parties all around. and. Um, at night, 4 a.m., you know, the band still play, and 6 a.m., you still hear the band play, and, and, and sometimes you even go through the window or the balcony, and you could see from far the lights and the band playing there. So, and I, I remember the first thing I, I heard was trombone, bass, and conga. <coughs> that, that was the, 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 like the first sound I, I remember to hear in music. So, so maybe that was, you know, the back of my big head. <laughs> and, and and now I did it, you know. Uh, I I just love being behind, like producing and getting everyone together and writing the music, uh, getting ready the tour. I, I love doing this. And uh, uh, Tromboranga is the <clears throat> pure essence of salsa dura. So why this? this music uh, style in particular, salsa dura, not salsa rom romantica or timba, mm. why salsa, salsa dura? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I just love sal raw salsa. I, lo I, I like to write um, and also play raw salsa. Um, I like people like congueros, bass player, pianos that play their heart off. It doesn't matter if they're playing salsa romantica or, or salsa dura or timba, but I like the feeling of just letting yourself go, you know? And salsa romantica for me, uh, <clears throat> in, in the 80s, I, I grew up on the 80s, so uh, salsa romantica for me, I didn't like it when, when it came out. You know, I used to hear Fania, or Willy Colón, Hector Labor, Rubén Blades, uh, stuff like that. And then when Salsa Romantica came out, like, like Jerry Rivera and those things in the 80s, my sister used to hear it. I was like totally against that. It's like, that's not salsa, that's just love songs. You know, Salsa Dura for me, um, with, I'd say this with all the respect for, to the other, you know, uh, musicians and style of music. Uh, and I don't say it on a on respectful way. But Salsa Dura for me has to be raw. It has to have a message, you know, on the lyrics. It's not, it cannot only be like, oh, how beautiful you are. I love you. I love you, baby. No, it has to have something else. You, know? you could have one song like that, but it has to have a message about social things, about, you know, what's going on in the world, what's going on in your country, in your life. Not only about how beautiful I love you or you leave, you leave me and you go. So, or you take my cowbell, where is my cowbell? Or you take my cowbell, well, that's a reality. All the Tromboranga <laughs> songs, that's a guaracha. So salsa also has to have something like that, like real life thing, but make it fun. 
that's a guaracha, that's that's a concept. So, so uh, I will say like 99% of Tromboranga songs are real cases of real life. And this is a real life story, Palo Pala Campana. You know? <laughs> I see. Uh, it, it, Michina Colombiana. Uh, if you heard Michina Colombiana also, yeah, it, was, it. it was about... Actually, I think we were in Russia when this happened. Um, we were we were at a concert playing, and after the concert, we all came came out to dance with people, you know. And we were dancing, and there was this Chinese girl dancing very good, and everyone was like watching each other, like, who's gonna take her to dance? Who's gonna take her out to dance? Because everyone was like, wow, she's, she's you know, it's intimidating how good she was dancing, you know, and she was very good looking. So everyone was like, who's who's going? Who's going? <laughs> So one of us uh, went to, to, to dance with her, and the moment they start dancing, uh, he, he talked in English to her. He's like, wow, you dance so good, you know, that. and then she, she talked to him in Spanish, and he was like, ay, pues, como así usted puede hablarme español, vea, es que yo soy de Cali. <laughs> so the girl one from, was, I mean, she looked Chinese, but she was from Cali. So... You know, we, we, we just laughed about it and I did the lyrics and the, the song Michina Colombiana. I see. See that those those things are, are real life stories. So tell about the band. I mean, of course, uh, uh, you have uh, 12 you said members. I mean, but in general about the band, uh, about the band members and uh, how you still get together for uh, almost 10 years, right? Yeah, we, we do 10 years next year. Now we are doing nine. Um, yeah, almost 10. Almost 10. We are 12, mu 12 person traveling, but we are 10 musicians on stage. Okay. Um, we have three trombones, uh, which is like the, the sign of the, of, of the, of the orchestra. Uh, they are led by Vladimir Peña which is like the main trombone and he's like my partner on crime and on, on the was one of the founders also with me for Tromboranga. And I didn't met him until he came. He was from Venezuela, but I didn't met him until he came to Barcelona. And someone told me, there is Vladimir here. He plays trombone and he just arrived from, from Venezuela. So I call him right away, we met and And we talk about the project and he's like, yeah, man, I, I would love to play salsa, you know. And then uh, we have Freddy Ramos also from Venezuela. And he used, I used to work with Freddy a long time ago uh, because Freddy also plays guitar. So we used to have like a duo and a trio with, with more musicians playing, you know, rock, pop, Son Montuno, even like Atas. We played everything a long time ago. And he was, I called him because I was producing also Bloque 53. And um, I called him to, to sing in one of the, of the albums. And then, you know, we were going to do the album uh, for Tromboranga. We were, I wanted to do the demo. So I told him and he said like, yeah, of course, man, I, come with me. You know, he, he loves salsa. So. And then uh, Diego from Cuba, I met Diego at a concert and, uh, of Bloque 53 and he jumped on stage. I, I, I called him and he's like, he started singing and he said like, this is the guy for Tromboranga, you know. Because he, Diego is uh, 62 years old already, but he's got such an energy on stage. It's just amazing. And he, he's a real like sonero from Corazón, like born sonero in Cuba, you know. He worked with Tropicana for a long time. He, he, so he has that, very strong background, sonero background, so it, it, which is very necessary. And both of them, Freddy and Diego, they, they on stage, it's a very good mix because they are very different, but they mix and blend very well. So it, it was luck, you know, to have them. And I feel very lucky to have them in the band. But you don't have trumpets, right? You have only trumpets. No, no, no. I hate trumpets. No, I'm, <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, The thing is that I love trombones too much. I really love trombone, and, 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 and I like the, the bands like La Perfecta from Palmieri. I like uh, Manio Kendo Conjunto Libre, uh, La Narvaez, La Dimension Latina, like I mentioned before. So I like trombone sounds. Um, okay. 
You already mentioned that the messages of the songs that you say it's about uh, the life, social aspect, the uh, life, not only about um, love, but also about some social aspects of our life. But I wanted to ask you, you have one song, mm, I wanted to, to ask about the message of this so song. The song is called, um, uh, just a second, No Me Des Bachata. Oh. I wanted to ask about the message of this song. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to ask you, what do you think about the sensual styles that they are really popular right now? And uh, what is the message of this song? Do, do you want me to, to <laughs> tell you my thought about sensual bachata and then no, I mean the, the sensual, message of the song? The style, you know, I'm telling in general that now. Yeah. Uh, It's true, it's a matter of fact that sensual dance styles are getting more and more popular and uh, if you see, look through the congresses, they have separate congresses. So uh, the question actually was, uh, was kind of a joke about this song, but you know, I looked through the, all the albums. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. and uh, what do you Let's think, look. how can we keep salsa, uh, salsa alive? I mean, okay, take okay. it into account. First, uh, like to answer the questions like yeah. the, the the song it was written actually it was a real thing because i had a friend who he is like salsero and he started going out with this girl who loves bachata and she got like every time more into bachata bachata and a year passed and she got really hard into bachata and he was actually thinking about i cannot take this anymore Because every time we go to dance, she just wants to go to the bachata room. She doesn't want to dance with me and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, this is a good thing for a song. <laughs> Because I actually don't, I'm, I'm not a bachata fan, let's say it that way, okay? So, so I, I wrote this song about this girl that loves to go out to dance bachata and he, his boyfriend just wants to dance salsa. So he's like very, ah, oh, I want to dance. So that's, That's the song, like, don't give me more bachata, please. That's that's what the song is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, now um, talking about about the reality, about the bachata taking out, uh, take, taking all the congresses, you know, saying it away, I think we cannot complain about this, in a way, because it, it has helped to develop more the festivals and congresses all around the world. Because a lot of festivals, Salsa festivals sometimes didn't have enough people to get, you know, uh, money to do more things. And now a lot of festivals, uh, I don't want to say names, but a lot of festivals are taking advantage. Like the organizers are very like deep, hard salseros and they don't like bachata, but they know that if they put bachata in their congresses, it will feel more and they can have the money to bring a live band, salsa band. So, in a way, it can help help us also, because it, it has helped us. But now there is another side of it. And it's, it's the side that really kind of, um, how can I say this? Uh, touches me, which is, we are changing what bachata is. Bachata sensual is not bachata. Okay. It's a, the cultural side of it is lost for me and it's not interesting for me anymore because they could have called it just sensual first the music they play is not bachata is whatever ballads or whatever you want to call it with a bachata background you know I and i don't find that interesting it's not it, it's not traditional anymore you know like it, even it, from it, dominican it, republic uh, tradition yeah it, it, so, it, it, it doesn't even sound like it's play a lot of a lot of these bachata songs like samplers you know even though they record it but they try to tune everything so perfect and put everything on the beat so perfect that sounds all the same so for me it lost the heart and not only that they are calling it sensual bachata they should just take bachata out and call it sensual Because a lot of people are learning bachata here, and then when they go somewhere else to dance, but real bachata, they say, oh, this is not bachata, you know? They think what they learn is the, 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 bachata, this, 
sensual bachata they learn is the real thing, and it is not. So I have I have had cases of students that go to the Republic, uh, Dominican Republic, and when they go to bachata, you know, they take out a knife and <laughs> this is not bachata. What you're doing with my music, you know? <laughs> I see. So so it has two sides. And the only side that really bugs me, in a way, is that one. That the cultural thing, the definition of bachata, is being lost. And, and it's not a culture anymore about the music. It's more about being sensual, beautiful, sorry to say like that. Beautiful body, beautiful girls moving very sensual, but it's, it, it, it's lost. It's not culture anymore. I see. So... Uh... Uh, we come back to the music of Tromboranga, and uh, Tromboranga has very danceable sound, actually. Uh, songs are very, uh, very danceable. You personally, author or co-author of almost all the songs, are you a dancer? I mean, do you, do you do dance by yourself? Oh, yeah, I like to dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, lo I love to dance, uh, especially after concerts, because it relaxes you. Now you are more relaxed. You know, so so. When, when we meet in person, save a dance for me. Oh, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. True. Not bachata, salsa. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. And everyone, like, if there is someone there hearing this interview and knows me, they know I don't dance bachata. I mean, if you see me, th there is one time, I think, I don't know if it was in South Africa or even here in Barcelona, Someone took me to dance bachata and I was like, no, 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 until they, they got me, like forced me and, you know, I had to dance. And I danced one bachata and everyone recorded. I think there isn't even a YouTube video of me making fun of that. But, uh, but yeah, I dance. I, I like to dance salsa. I'm not the type of dancer, like school dancer, you know. Uh, I know all the steps, but I dance more. I could dance on two, I could dance on one, but... I'm, I, can, I can dance on Montuno. I, I like I, to dance on Montuno. It's, it's, for me, it's, it's lovely to dance. But uh, I'm not the school type, like 73, lift your hand, turn it in this side, you know. I'm more quiet. I like to dance uh, groovy, feeling the, you know, the body of the other person. Do turns when it needs to be, when there is accent, when there is a mambo, but I'm very calm. Sometimes people think, like, oh, you should dance like, you know, like, 50 Very spins, flashy. 50 spins. Uh, yeah, and I do not like that. So sometimes, it, it, ha it has happened to me, some girls get boring, get bored, sorry, dancing with me because they are expecting to me to dance like Fernando Sosa. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like, I, I don't, you know, actually, I, I learned to dance in Venezuela. You don't do that in Venezuela. If you go to dance in Venezuela like that, someone will take a knife and cut your... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you know? But also, like your songs, be, be, besides very, being very danceable, they are very popular and some of them are really like salsa hits and they used in some even TV shows, uh, in European TV shows. So how, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, just tell us how to make a real salsa hit. I mean, maybe you have some formula. Because, yeah, most of these songs uh, are like very, very popular and they are heard on all over the festival. So maybe you have some secret ingredients. Well, recipe, like I, I you said. The, 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 oh, sorry. I don't know. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just put the mic. Uh, the secret ingredient for me is do it with passion. Whatever you do, you know, it's. I. I I have write songs that takes me two minutes to write and this is the music and we record it very easily and it's the it's a hit. You know, but I'm being honest when I write. Now sometimes some songs need more writing, you know, more think about stuff and you know. And some some songs like that, the more um let's say the the more things you want to say and put it beautiful for everyone, the worse it's going to get. Because the message is not there. And I believe, and this is, I don't know if you call it a secret, whatever you want to do, but, but that's the way I work. I think a song, every song has a spirit, has a soul, you know. So 
you have to respect the soul of the song. And sometimes people want to put a lot of fl flourishers around and blah, 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 and you kill the message on it. Okay? So I, I think you, you have to think about that when you compose something. Now, obviously, if you want to write a danceable song, you know, you have to, it has to have a certain beat, it has to have certain tempo, etc. But if you take that certain tempo and that certain beat and just put it there and sing something on top, no one is going to dance to it anyway, even though you could dance to it. And I mean by this is that they, they doesn't have a soul, you know, and the soul comes when there is something honest when you write. So a lot of songs, like for me, uh, uh, some people write me like, oh man, I have laughed with this song, like you don't know, and I have cried my heart out when I heard this song. But at the same time, I'm dancing to it. I, I don't know how you did it. It's like, but I don't know either. I just, you, sometimes you have to try to be honest, you know? It's, that's, that's my way to see it. And you also, you have a lot of video clips so-called uh, videos of some of your songs and in yeah. some videos i'm a dancer you know i'm a so social dancer okay i would say and you have some on the video right now people will see i'm neris martinez you have some famous dancers in in the videos like adolfo and i'm neris martinez was twice in your videos yeah. by the way so how you choose the dancers? I mean, it's just your friends, or why do you choose these or the, those dancers for some of, of the songs? Well, um, the the reality is I try, I try to keep it cool with it. Uh, we are an independent band, meaning that everything that we do, it comes from my uh, budget, <laughs> okay? So it's not like we are having a producer uh, yes, Sony yes. Music or Universal behind us. It's ourselves and it's me planning everything. So um, normally I tend to use friends. Uh, that doesn't mean that they don't get paid. They obviously, I mean, we, we, we work. But I, I think the relationship between, between when you do a video with people, you have to have that connection with them also to explain what you want. And, and sometimes they, they also give back you know, ideas and stuff. Like with Adolfo, we, we thought about doing this video that they are going, he's waiting for Tania and, and you know, and they arrive, she, he arrives late, you know, like, like it, so, so for me doing a video, you know, like the guys from Tromboranga make fun of me and they call me, uh, what's the name of this guy? Uh, Tarantino, Joaquin Tarantino. <laughs> okay. Like, because I always come with these big ideas and at the end I cannot make it because I don't have the, the budget to do it, you know. Like we did Michina Colombiana. You see that video? Uh, we did all that video in seven hours. But you wear all, all this, in the, you know, like masks of some old Chinese uh, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we put all the, the, like a Chinese restaurant and we, we do the makeup and everything. Everything was in seven hours. Later we, we edited it, but re all the recording was seven hours and it has to be like fast. I get like very nervous, like they get annoyed by me because I'm very pushy. And come on, let's do this, let's do this. I get like into, into, now I'm happy, you know, interviews and when I'm social, I, I'm very happy. But when I'm into work, I'm a nightmare for people and, and I know it because I'm... Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very disciplined. Well, actually, I wanted to pass some casting when you're gonna, you know, have, but now I think maybe I should <laughs> think of Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, actually, I'm, I think I'm a very cool and relaxed person or when I'm... When so, you sleep, you mean when you sleep? When I sleep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I get to work, into rehearsals and stuff like that, you know, I have to be pushy because if I, if I don't do it, no one, no one is taking the... And, you know, time is going by, money is going by, and you don't do nothing. So you have to be really there. Uh, also for uh, Un Extraterrestre, we, we also recorded like in eight or nine hours. If you see the video Un Extraterrestre, it was like a, looks like a big production. But, you know, we did a green screen on the background and do, do all the, the things we had to do. So I really like to do the videos oriented for dancers because I, I love to see people dance. You know, I, I enjoy a lot see people dance and I enjoy see people like Ameris, Adolfo, Falco. Falco is an amazing dancer. Um, 
uh, Zoe from Barcelona, which is in the Kelinda que estás also video, she, she is amazing. Uh, we are doing a new video. The new album is coming now, in a, at the end of August, and we're working already on two new videos. I'm, I cannot say there's dancers because it's a surprise, but it's a big, well-known dancers, and it's gonna be great video. And I think it's gonna be one of the best videos of Tromboranga because we're gonna work on this one very, very hard. And it's for you dancers, you know, I, I, li I like to do that because I, I enjoy really seeing good choreography and, and good musicality on, on, on videos. So we're looking forward uh, to seeing it. And um, I wanted to ask you, you were traveling before even creating your own band, you were traveling accompanying very famous musicians like uh, Andy Montañez, like Caño Estremera, y, uh, you also with Tromboranga were traveling a lot with Jimmy Bosch, I had an interview with Jimmy Bosch also Disney. before. Yeah, and you were thrown with Oscar De Leon. Who is your favorite salsa band? I mean, or salsa vocalist, salsa sonero. sonero. Ismael Rivera. Yeah. Ismael Rivera for me, it's uh, it, it gets all the all the conditions to be, I mean, it's very hard to say who is the best. For me, there is no best. There is, you know, difference between each of them. But if you have to tell me, okay, choose one, the one you have, you're going to record with, I will, would have loved to record with Ismael Rivera. Uh, sadly, obviously, he's dead already, but I love the way he, he sings and the way he does the soneos because he's very, he sounds very spontaneous and he's, even though he's singing and sings very good, he, he, it looks like he's talking to you, you know? It sounds like he's talking to you and also it's very musical. Sometimes it sounds like a tres. He could, he's singing like he's a tres or sometimes he's got the percussion thing on it. And he's improvising everything on clave, you know? Um, which a good sonero has to do. But I think I have to say that he's my preferido, you know? And it's, okay. I also love Oscar de Leon from Venezuela, from my country, because I grew up hearing him. You know, Oscar de Leon, it's, I think it's very com complete sonero, complete singer, and he's also, I mean, I, I have seen him so many times, uh, but uh, it is amazing to see him live. You know, now he's a bit old, but he's amazing. So you see the video right now, we found see, the video. Yeah, we played yeah, yeah. him in, in, here in Barcelona, and also in France we did some concerts. He's amazing. He's a... You know, he could be three hours on stage. I, I have seen him three hours on stage. Three hours. No break. He just wow. there, dancing, jumping, playing the bass. Then he goes back to the, you know, it's, and he was 50 when I saw him like this. So, you know, it's, it's just an amazing guy. It's uh, uh, Also, Andy Montañez, he, he's got an amazing voice and still has an amazing voice. Ray de la Paz, also. Yes, uh, actually, I love that my, guy. My, I love, my favorite. He's a, he's a very humble guy, also. But, uh, I haven't had a chance to, to play with him. I have met him several times, but um, maybe someday we will we'll work together. But he's, I love his, his timbre of voice, you know, very elegant, but at the same time, obviously, talking about elegant, Gilberto Santa Rosa, it's, uh, he's, he, He's very versatile, also. He could play salsa dura, he could do romantica, he could do, you know. So there, there is a lot of, of very good soneros still. We actually, uh, during our interviews, we usually ask people to get some comments in their, in their lives, but we have a, like a call, unexpected call from one uh, person who wanted to ask the question. Yeah, he wanted to ask the question, oh. you know, personally. <laughs> so we have we have a we have a secret, like unexpected call from a DJ. Whoa, Fox. what a surprise! <laughs> Our nice great to hear friend. You, bro. It's a great DJ, a billionaire actually. Girls, <laughs> big like. Look carefully, watch carefully, he, and he's, he's one of the one who told me that you have to go. One of the one who told me that you have to go to Ukraine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
when he comes to Ukraine, he doesn't have time. His schedule is fully booked usually. So now it's a great opportunity to see him uh, on the screen. It's a DJ Fox, Burak. Fox, Burak. Uh, hello. Hi. Yes. Hello. Uh, Olga, thank you. That social talks is it's amazing work. Thank you very much. Uh, my brother, it's nice to uh, see you here. Uh, you know, I want to say first, we met in Beirut. Uh, we pray for Beirut because we yeah. have amazing, great people there and they deserve the best. Uh, we pray for Lebanon first. Uh, I have a small and easy question for you tonight. Uh, I know your old band members uh, are great musicians and they have amazing passion. But of course, 10 different person, musicians, and you are traveling a lot. Uh, and you need to collaborate with the organizers uh, for the concerts. Sometimes you are giving concerts in the inside of the festivals. And I know uh, the group is very humble. Uh, yeah. That's what we love. Uh, and you are very professional. Uh, I want to ask you your uh, expectations from uh, organizers. Uh, sometimes you are happy, sometimes you are not. And if you have a story about that, uh, we would like to uh, hear that. Uh, and thank you for your great music as always. We love you. Oh man, I am so, oh, man. I am so happy to see you, man. Seriously, I'm so happy. This is a good surprise. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, Uh, well, I'm, I'm surprised. Um, yeah, about your question. Um, yeah, we have had uh, actually some sometimes very serious problems. What, what we actually, well, you know, you know us because we we, we, we have worked together. We, we we try to make the best show possible all the time. We give a thousand hundred percent all the time. And sometimes you have problems with uh, sound, okay? Like sometimes if you don't have the right sound or the right equipment to do the concert, it could affect what's going to happen. Sometimes if you have you don't have the time to do a good uh, sound check, you know, it, it it also you know make us more nervous about when you go on stage. Obviously, with time we have learned uh, uh, a lot of things how to do it because, for example. I don't want to talk bad about anyone, but in uh, some places, for example, in Latin America, it's hard because uh, sometimes you show up at a concert and they have a very amazing equipment, but you don't have time to ch so do sound checks because, you know, the, they tend to play, they tend to, to be la laid back, oh, sound check at five and then you're seven and it's like, oh, you have to go already. Oh, we didn't have time to do, you know. And sometimes also you arrive and they have a good sound, but they don't have a back line or they don't have a good back line or or sometimes everything is perfect. And when you arrive to the hotel, which it should have certain, uh, let's say, qualities, it's mm -hmm. it's like, you know, five people in one room, like, it's like, no, like we cannot be like this, especially if you're traveling, you know, now when we met, we, we didn't travel in that much, but Now, these last three years, we've been traveling like crazy. And sometimes, like, for example, in USA, we, meet, we made a, a tour of a whole month. And we had like seven concerts in a row and sometimes playing two concerts in one day. So you really need to have, you know, a good hotel. Uh, because at the seventh day that you are like this, you're already like, you, you don't want to talk to anyone. You just want to go to your room and sleep. <laughs> But the moment you jump on stage, you are very professional. So... And, and as you know, because you have lived with, with, with us, we love to share with the people. So we jump on stage and it doesn't matter if, if we have bad sound, if, if the light goes off, because sometimes we, we play once, uh, two concerts, the lights went off. And I think it was one of the most exciting concerts because um, people realized that we were human. The electricity went off. But we keep we keep playing. We didn't stop, and all the musicians started like, oh, and I said, no, just keep playing. So the piano didn't sound because it's electrical, so it didn't sound. The bass didn't sound, but all the percussion keeps sounding, lower volume, but keeps sounding, and the trombones could keep playing. 
And the vocalist, obviously, you could not hear them, but he could scream. And so what we do, we, we keep playing and we, pick, we put the people to sing the chorus while the singers were, were singing. And we jumped with the drums, with the public. So we made a whole party with the public while there was no electricity and they could see the live, real life thing on a, on a concert. And people just went crazy, you know, people loved it. And when the electricity came that came up, boom, all of a sudden, like the sound was very loud and everyone was just like, you know, orgasm. It was, so it was a very unique situation. That people saw that we are humans, but we give 100% all the time on, on stage. So, you know, we, we try and always to make the best. Very much, that's good yeah. answer. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm so happy to see you, man. Ah. Yes, I hope to see you soon, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll... Kiev or in Istanbul, we will see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, by the way, guys, DJ Fox is a really great DJ playing, very, very uh, professionally, very good music usually. When he is in Kiev and he's playing music, uh, people really don't want to sit down, they continue dancing. So I hope to see you too very soon, somewhere, personally, but yeah. probably next year. So we we will pray for the best. Thank you very much for your call thank you. and thank you very much for your question. So thank you. Thank Love you. A big hug to you, man. Love you, Take man. Care. <laughs> you Take care. Thank you, bro. Bye bye. Take care. So we we will continue. We have to continue. It's a good thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to see you. So social talks it's a program with a lot of surprises. So I keep watching. And by the way, we are I've almost finishing our conversation. So people, if you want to uh, oh. ask questions, so please proceed with this. I have several more topics to discuss right now in Barcelona. You, of course, we have quarantine, some, uh, you know, restrictions, uh, I'm sure, in Barcelona and Kiev. So what do you think about online concerts that right now people are supposed to do, you know, because we do not have opportunity to perform live a lot. It's first part of my question. And second, uh, you have a lot of online classes. You actually started before even yeah. quarantine this online yeah. classes. So tell about this. So these two small issues about online activities. activities. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's good to do online concerts. Um, you always have to think why you're doing it, though. <laughs> because uh, um, I've, the thing with the live concert is that sometimes you don't have a good equipment to do it, and it could be disastrous. I, I've seen, like, Trombolanga hasn't done it yet, because we live outside Barcelona, some of us, so it, it's hard with the quarantine to get together to do it, and we need to get a good team to do all the internet thing. So it, it, it ain't easy thing. Uh, but I think it is a good idea to keep the, the salseros, you know, with um, animos, you know, to, to, to keep seeing salsa and, you know, quarantine, we're in home uh, alone, some people, and they just need to see bands, they just need to see, see stuff and interact also with the band. So I think they, they should keep doing concerts. Now, it's, it's very difficult for me to explain what I'm going to say now because I have got calls from people to do concerts for Tromboranga. But they wanted to do it for free under their own, let's say, interface, which is, I found like, well, I'm going to, you know, I don't, I don't see the reason why I should pay, you know, sound engineer, internet technician, rent a place, you know, put a stage, line in everything, which is a lot of money, to put it on the internet for you to put it, you know, like, for your benefit, you know. Uh, so, I'm, I'm not saying names, but I think it is important for organizers to understand that musicians and dancers, because this is for dancers too, dancers want to show what they do. It's normal because that's why we are artists. We also want to show what, what we do and we want to share our art with the people and have that interaction. But some people take advantage of that. Okay, and, and 
we as an artist, we have to be aware of that. I'm not saying that you do whatever you, you want to do. If you want to dance for free, if you want to go dancing for free, it's your point. If you want to go play for free, but then later don't come criticizing. Oh, well, I'm not getting paid what I should because you need to respect yourself also what you're doing. And that's why you should do, like I was saying with Burak, we do what we do 100%, sometimes a thousand percent, the best we could do. But that that's, has a value, you know? And sometimes some organizers sometimes don't understand that. They, they just want to, to, you know, have tromboranga. I'm going to have tromboranga, uh, blah, 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 but, uh, you know, that, that has a value to, to make that. You know, we need to study, we need to rehearse. We, we, we have already 10 albums. That's a lot of money involved, a lot of energy and a lot of heart. So I think, you know, before asking someone to come play or come dance for free at my festival, people should, you know, back a little bit down and see what to do. Because it, it's, it is very important for the artists and organizers, organizers to understand that. Maybe I my extended it too much. <laughs> No, my second question was about your uh, online classes. Not only online, you have uh, classes of musicality during the festivals before quarantine yeah. and uh, also percussion classes. And now you have a okay, blog or how to say on YouTube channel. I was watching amazing, even in Spanish, because I need to practice my Spanish. So I was watching it in Spanish. We have a question. So I want to ask the question from the audience regarding your uh workshops so we ha have a question from uh belgium from ekaterina maria she is our great friend she is watching my social talks interviews all the time thank you very much i appreciate that and she's asking all the time interesting questions so the question from her how mm, to explain the rhythm to a beginner uh to begin okay from beginner to intermediate level and then to, to a dancer to make him understand and what advice you give to a salsa instructor to how to teach person uh, musicality I mean what can you advise to some instructors okay okay uh, well that question is like very big depends of, of you know uh, that's very general the first thing uh, to be a, a, I mean this could take two hours so I'm gonna be very very point to do okay. straight to the point the first thing you need to know is how to teach and how to explain what you know because a lot of people have the information in their mind or in their body but they don't know how to express it i've seen a lot of like big names but they don't actually know how to teach the students and this is why I think you need to understand the student first be before teaching them. Because you could sit down with 500 persons and say, this is like this, this is like this, and this is like this, because I say it. And that's it. And that's not how it works in salsa. That's why I think if you teach salsa class, it couldn't be more than 20 or 30 persons. Because you need to understand each person, how they absorb what you're teaching. Some people have problems with coordination, but they hear very good. Some people don't hear, you know, they need to concentrate, but they don't, but they have very good coordination. Okay. Uh, some people don't speak English, then you have to see how to, you know. So uh, you could know how to do a 73 and spin 500 spins in 30 seconds. That's good. And everyone oh, wants to study with you because you do it, but you don't do 500 spins on a social dance. So you, as a student, also you have to make sure who you're going to study with depending on, on your needs, you know. Uh, so that's my first thing to say for teachers, because I also am a student all the time. I, I like to go to, when I go to the festivals, I've been going through festivals like for 15 years in, in Europe, playing. Okay, and more than 12 or, th or 13 teaching musicality or teaching percussion, etc. Uh, and I, I, when I go to the classes, sometimes I see dance teacher, they just explain, put here, put here, put there, put there. They don't even care what this sounding, you know, that like, 
if they are dancing to a guaracha or if they are dancing to a stone montuno or a mambo. Sometimes they don't even explain that. Uh, sometimes they don't even dance on poles, which is the first thing that everyone should understand and hear the poles on the music. If you don't know where the pulse is, what's, why you want to know where the one is? Who cares where the one is if, if you don't see where the pulse is? You know, between one and one, there is things going on. So you need to know where the pulse is. Because if not, it's like, uh, I always compare it to the, like when you go to a feria, to a circus, and you see the rabbit going, boom, 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 and you are with the, you know, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. The moment you step, you're already late, you know? So you need to feel how it works. That's, that's one of my first things to say. The second, it's learn the terminology good. A lot of the people, a lot of dancers I, I see in classes teaching and saying syncopation. And they are saying syncopation where there is no syncopation. They are they saying do. this, they say, this is a, let's dance on Montuno and they are dancing on one. Yeah. Or they are dancing on Montuno and they count one when there is a four yeah or they are dancing on two and they count five six seven eight one two three five six seven that's not a five that's an a half so that's why when you as a student go back to your house and start dancing and see yourself in the mirror and you say five six seven but why why i don't look like my teacher because that's not a five you're stepping on the five and that's not a five so you have to be careful with those things. I say it in a humble way because I'm not a salsa teacher. I'm not a dance teacher, okay? That's that's what I see. Thank you very much. By the way, uh, as I said, the uh, audience is multinational, so we have people not only from Ukraine and not only from Europe. There is a person. Uh, his name is Ismail Castro. He says, Olga ask Joaquin when he comes back to New York City. Oh. City. Oh, uh, actually, I should have been in July. I was going to be in July, but with the coronavirus, we don't know. We are supposed to go back to USA. We are supposed with Tromboranga, January, February. No, we it. hope because we'll we it. hope because I have a lot of friends in New York. I have a lot of friends in Miami, a lot of friends in New Jersey. And uh, we, we were supposed to have three concerts in July in New York and two concerts in Miami. We couldn't make it, so we hope we can go back. We are, and I, I have to be like, I cannot extend how desperate we are. We need to play live, you know? Yeah. We need to share with the people. We need to, so hope we can come back. By the way, right now, um, uh... I want to pass you best regards from the guy from Ukrainian great percussionist Konga man of Ukrainian salsa band Dislocados. He's watching right now. He is sending best oh. regards. Hi guys. His name I is Alejandro. Know. Alejandro. His name is Sacha. Sacha. Alejandro. So Sacha. Hello. And uh, so you have a lot of friends already in Ukraine. So you're always welcome. I mean, when I'm when we have a Ukraine, I'm talking to have to a Ukraine. I'm telling you, I'm coming to Ukraine sooner or later. Let me know. Let yeah. me know. I would like to ask you, uh, how do you recharge yourself beside uh, playing, beside music? What hobbies do you have beside music? Beside music? Um, well, I love nature and I love the ocean. So uh, normally I learned to scuba dive uh, six years ago. I found oh, this. Oh, you have it there. <laughs> you got it. I, no, I have some. <laughs> Teleparic, uh, <laughs> you know, skills. Yeah, I love to scuba dive. For me, it's uh, I've been lucky that I'm a musician and I can travel around the world playing. So normally, if, when I like, if I go to Australia, I stay one week and go diving like in the best spot. You know, I sometimes spend all the little money I have in going diving. But it's uh, and being on nature also. You know, I could be in an island like takes you 48 hours to get to that little island in the middle of nowhere. But I love to do that because it helps you to contact with yourself and, and, and nature, you know. Uh, I think we all need that sometimes, you know. Uh, con connect with water and feel because, yeah. you know, we are at the end, that's what we are. We live too much into buildings and even dancing with all the respect, you know, we, we, we spend sometimes so much 
time dancing and worrying about, oh, I'm going to look good and blah, blah, blah. And at the end, there's something more than that. You know, you got to go back to nature and watch nature, watch sunsets and moons. It's very important because we do not, we spend a lot of time in the office and we don't see sunsets. Yeah. Watch sunsets. And do you have some dreams, uh, maybe some childish dreams that you still have not completed or you still dream to realize? Dream to realize. Uh, I'm gonna sound like very, oh, but uh, before my son was born, I could have died the next day and I didn't care because I did everything and even more that I wanted in my life. To be honest, I'm not, you know, it's like now my, my son is born, you know, he's three years old and now I cannot say that because I want to see him grow. Um, but obviously I want to see my son, I want to see him good. But also, like you saw, if I pay, think personally, I would love to go back to travel more like we used to before the coronavirus. That's the only thing I wish now. So we can go play live, share with the people because we love share music with the people. That's the only thing I ask now. Please, I don't know if there is a God or whoever it is. Universe, maybe. Yeah, maybe the universe. universe will hear all of us. <laughs> yes. Okay, and... Mm. You know, I would like to, I don't want to, you know, finish this conversation because really it's amazing to to have a talk with you. You are very, you are very inspiring person, very positive. And uh, nice. thank you very much once again for being yeah. with us tonight. But uh, usually I'm, you know, like closing the talk with this question. Uh, what is absolute happiness to you? To you. Absolute happiness. Absolute happiness. Well, you are asking something very hard. I'm doing this time. deliberately. That you now keep in going one hour more. <laughs> this is this is very hard. I'm, I'm living now. I'm I'm at a very hard moment in my life. Um, I'm separating. I I wasn't expecting to do this. I love my wife, but we are separating. So it's, I'm, now I'm like a very hard moment in my life, but. For me now, maybe this is this is gonna sound weird, but for me now, I would love to be on a beach, on a little island in Thailand, eating prawns, pad thai, with my wife and my little kid for a week. That will be like total happiness. <laughs> but it's not gonna happen. Know, yeah, you know. that would be that, well, yeah, it'd be that, well, yeah, in the future maybe, but but now it's very difficult. You know, it's a I'm 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 living some really hard personal times now, but uh, it's a good question anyway because it really makes you. you know. I would like to wish you to get over. I mean, uh, these hard moments because after hard moments usually come uh, yeah. positive, and after dark side usually comes white side, so called. I don't know exactly. to say it correctly. So I would like to thank you for this amazing talk, uh, for this amazing time with you. And I would like to wish you, I'm sure people will join me with with this words, to wish you personally to the band great success, thank to you. meet uh, very soon with each other on the stage, to give more concerts, to travel and to see people and to share this positive energy, not only through the screens, but face to face on the dance floor, because actually I have a stimulus because you are already own a dance for me, one dance. Yeah, two. <laughs> okay, so no, I can give in the chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Uh, and by the way, guys, watch uh, Hawkins YouTube channel. He has great great material for dancers, for musicians. I mean, for people who don't speak Spanish uh, very good like me, uh, actually, uh, you can practice hearing, uh, you know, his lectures on musicality and uh, other stuff. So my recommendations, uh, according to my own experience. So thank you very much. This is Social Talks. We'll see each other very soon. Have a great night, guys. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Olga, for inviting me and for your time and your patience. Thank and you. We're going to see each other. Bye.